Good morning. Let us start. Let us continue talking about uh, Jacobian. We have seen in the last lesson the geometric uh, Jacobian, and today we are going to see the analytical Jacobian. Now, in direct kinematics, we studied the possibility, the equations that given the robot configuration, the Q, allow us to compute the position of the end effect. At the same time, we compute, we are able to compute also the orientation of the end effect. Actually, what we have seen is the homogeneous transformation matrix. This is uh, exactly the same from the conceptual aspect, but here, and say, okay, I'm going to use uh, three or four parameters to represent the orientation. It means that here, the variable phi e can be either roll pitch u or uh, z, y, z, or quaternion, okay? Whatever it is. This is the direct kinematics. And uh, now, I want to study the relationships uh, between the velocities, the joint velocities and the end effect of velocities. In the previous lessons, we have seen the geometric Jacobian. So we built this mapping from joint velocities to end effect or linear and angular velocities. Now, let us do almost the same, but via differentiation of the direct kinematics. What we have here is uh, a multivariable function that has uh, represents a mapping from Rn, n is the number of joint, to, for example, for the linear, for the position, to the po three-dimensional position of the end effect. I can simply apply a derivative operation and my function is p dot he is equal the partial derivative of p with respect to q and then the partial derivative of q with respect to time the joint velocity q dot now the partial derivative of uh, a multivariable function is actually a matrix where each of the elements is uh, a partial derivative of a scalar function derivate with respect to one of the variables. Okay? So this is a simply calculus, so first class of mathematics that you've done. Here I have the partial derivative of the first element of P with respect to Q1, with respect to the first joint. Here, on the same row, I keep P1, and I make the derivative with respect to Q2 up to Qn, okay? And then I, I compute the derivative with respect uh, delta P2 with respect to delta Q1 and so on, okay? And this is uh, multiplied by Q dot, but then this is exactly the Jacobian, the position Jacobian, multiplied by Q dot. Actually, we are not going to demonstrate, but it can be easily seen that uh, this is exactly the position Jacobian that we have seen in the previous lesson, that we <laughs> built in the previous lesson, via some uh, geometric considerations, the propagation of the velocities, okay? The big difference is, as usual, in the orientation. We have seen that uh, uh, already the orientation representation needs some uh, additional thought, some additional effort. And the same is for the velocity, for the, for the orientation time derivative or angular velocity. I mean, it's using two different words. If I apply the time derivative of phi from the pure mathematical aspect, 
everything is exactly the same as the position. I don't have any difference. I just have to make the partial derivative. So conceptually, it's the same as the previous line. And then I have an object, and this object I can call it Jacobian with a subscript phi multiplied by Q dot. However, let me just think, is this uh, the angular velocity that we saw Is this the angular velocity that we saw in the previous lesson? Well, no, it is not. And we are going to see why. There is just one easy counterexample to, to, to understand that it cannot be the angular velocity. This can even be a four-dimensional vector if I use quaternion. Okay? Cannot be equal to a three-dimensional one. But even if I use a roll pitch and U, the time derivative of rho pitch u, we will see soon, does not have a physical meaning. The angular velocity, it does have a strong physical meaning because it represents <coughs> exactly the, the, the velocity of the rigid body. I can define as a analytical Jacobian by using the first three line of the position Jacobian and then three or four line of this uh, orientation Jacobian. And then uh, I would like to stress your attention on the left-hand side of this equation. Here, I do not have uh, the velocity. We use the symbol We use the symbol V. Now, I'm using another symbol. I'm using the symbol X dot T. What I'm getting is something different in the orientation. Okay, in the position, they will be the same. But this is something different. So now we need to understand what is the difference between uh, computing VE or X dot T and what are the differences uh, between those two jobs. We are going to use one or the other depending on the application. And we are going to, to work with both Jacobians for all the class. So we need to, to know the difference and we need to have it both in our, in our uh, skill, let me say, because uh, they are both needed. A, a little bit like the orientation representation. We studied several orientation representations because we need them and we use one or the other depending on the, on the situation. And the same is for the Jacobians. Okay. What is the relationship between uh, the time derivative of the orientation representation, phi dot e, and the angular velocity. We need to understand what is this relationship. So let us start with uh, a z, y, z, and let's see what is this difference. Then we will see a, a small example to touch with our ends why they are not the same, why the time derivative of the rep orientation representation is not the angular velocity. Okay. First of all, uh, let us start from, uh, I mean, a, a, a moving frame that uh, uh, superimposed to an inertial frame, and apply a rotation around z with velocity phi dot. So we do have a first movement imposed by phi dot, and the angular velocity of this first movement is a vector 0, 0, 1 of uh, length phi dot. Okay, this is what we have seen last time with the example of the disk. The angular velocity is a vector that is orthogonal to the, 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 the plane of the disk, and uh, the length of the vector is phi dot. But then, when uh, we compute uh, a, fa a following movement uh, caused by theta dot, well, the angular velocity now 
is affected by the current value of phi. And uh, this is uh, the rotation around the current frame, around y in current frame. If you look, this is y in current frame. And uh, in order to have the angular velocity expressed in inertial frame, I need to take into account the current value of phi and make the proper projection. So the angular velocity is given by the angular, the contribution to the angular velocity is given by <coughs> theta dot multiply this vector as a unit vector. And then with C dot, the reasoning is the same. It's a little bit less easy to, to, to visualize because now I do have uh, two different values, two uh, angles with values different from zero, theta and phi. But this is sufficient to compute the uh, relationship between the angular velocity and the time derivative of, in this case, zyz, the orientation representation zyz. Actually, they are related by a transformation matrix. This transformation matrix, that is exactly what we achieved here, okay? This transformation matrix is simply function of phi, of the orientation. Actually, what is a little bit... Uh, Okay, this is the relationship now. Oh, okay, phi here, I'm missing uh, a key here, okay? Where, here, where there is the mouse should be in a key. So the problem is, uh, okay, I have uh, a three by three matrix. I'm able to compute the angular velocity if I do have uh, the time derivative of uh, <coughs> the orientation representation. Can I reverse this equation? So explicitly this one. Of course, I should uh, left multiplying by the inverse of this matrix. So the first thing that I need to do is to check if this matrix has, is full rank. And if I just make the determinant, it's very easy the determinant of this matrix because I do have, uh, you know, line of zero, zero, one. If you remember the cofactor, I don't know if still is object of study, you can uh, easily see that the determinant of t is related to the sinus of theta, and then it can be zero. It means that uh, it's not always possible to reverse this equation. And actually, why is not always possible? Because a minimal uh, representation of the orientation suffers from the representation singularity. And this is exactly the representation, representation singularity of uh, the ZYZ orientation representation. Okay? So uh, I have uh, the relationship between the angular velocity and the time derivative of the orientation in this specific case, but I need to uh, always uh, <coughs> remark that with a minimal orientation representation, I do have. Uh, representation singularities. Okay. So, again, omega has a clear physical meaning. Omega is uh, a angular velocity vector. It represents the axis around which my rigid body rotates and the length of the vector represents the velocity. Okay, the, the physical meaning of omega is uh, very strong. On the other hand, uh, phi dot does not have a physical meaning. Is simply, let me say, the time derivative of uh, the orientation representation. Well, now, okay, but if I do integrate phi dot, I have phi, and phi is the orientation, which uh, is a nice property. What happens if, if 
I do integrate omega. Well, nothing useful. If I do integrate omega, the result does not have uh, a physical meaning. Omega has a physical meaning, it's integral naught. Phi dot does not have a physical meaning, but it can be integrated. Why do I need to integrate? We will uh, understand it when we, are, we will apply some uh, control laws. And we close the feedback and we need to integrate in order to control the orientation of the end effect. But now we need to understand the mathematical properties before trying even to think at designing a control law for, uh, for a law. In order to have, a, let me say, a more or less practical example, let us consider two rotations with the same integral, but in the end with the final uh, orientation. If I start to, if I apply to a rigid body an angular velocity of a pi over two along uh, x for one second, and then uh, the same length around y, again for one second, <coughs> The integral is this one, okay? From zero to two omega dt, the integral is uh, pi over two. Well, this is the result even if I reverse the order and I first apply a rotation around y for one second of pi over two and then a rotation around x for one second of pi over two. So the integral is the same. However, the final orientation will not be the same. So this is just a, a counterexample to understand that the integral of omega does not have a physical meaning. Uh, let us see that the orientation is not the same with the, a draw, okay? So this is a, a rigid body. And we apply on the uh, left hand side this omega and on the right hand side the other one. And let's see what, what's happened. First, uh, from zero to one, I have uh, a rotation of uh, uh, 90 degrees around X. So this is uh, X and my cube is now here, okay? Just a rotation of 90 degrees. And then 90 degrees around Y. And this is the final around Y. You, you should, uh, uh, in order to, to, to one, one possibility is to uh, make the personified, uh, personified vector and uh, make a, a counterclockwise rotation, counterclockwise rotation. So this is Y, and from here to here, you have a 90 degrees rotation. Okay, if I just reverse the order and I first rotate around Y, so from here, I just rotate and arrive here, and then X, this is the final orientation. Just a, a simple example to touch with our ends that the integral, integral of the angular velocity does not have a physical meaning, okay? <clears throat> okay, what if I do have the analytical Jacobian and I want the, the, the geometric Jacobian or vice versa. Is it possible? Well, yes, is it possible? Because the relationship is between, uh, in the end, uh, VE and X dot E. And then, between the angular velocity and the time derivative of the orientation representation. I can write this relationship easily and then it comes out 
and it's really straightforward that this is the relationship between the two jacobins. Okay, so I'm able to, to, to use it. Sometimes I need to use the geometric jacobian, sometimes the analytical jacobian. So let us be prepared to have both, to work with both. What do they represent physically each of them? Sorry? the uh, linear and the factor velocity, mm -hmm. three by one, the linear velocity. Mm -hmm. And this is the angular and the factor velocity, this three by one. This vector is six by one. By itself it doesn't, I mean, it also has different unit measurements, mm -hmm. but we will very often work with the velocities, linear and angular mixed together, as in this case. And then in this case, this is the same, but this is the time derivative of the rotation representation. So the point is uh, that this guy here does not have a physical limit, but it can be integrated easily. Because if I make the integral here, I have the end effect or configuration, end effect or force. This one, I cannot integrate because for the component four, five, and six, I don't have a physical limit. Or I need to properly integrate, let's say it's not straightforward. <coughs> Okay, now let us talk about uh, a very important topic in robotics. There are kinematic singularities, and we will start working with the geometric geometry. I know that I have this mapping from the time derivative uh, of uh, the joint, Q dot, to the end effect linear and angular velocity. However, Planar to link. This is my robot, joint one, joint two, q dot one, q dot two, and it, together, if you remember, I have that this is uh, j p one and this is j p two. Okay. If you remember the geometrical interpretation uh, of uh, the uh, Jacobian, that for the linear velocity is very useful to represent it in that way. 3 by 1, 3 by 1, uh, they are exactly the first three elements of the columns in the Jacobian. Okay, so I can write uh, write the same matrix multiplication in that way. The linear velocity is equal q dot jp1 plus q dot 2 jp2. So now those are two vectors on a plane in this case. What if the rank of the Jacobian is let me say not full. In this case, the rank of the Jacobian I'm interested in is two, only x and y component of the end effect of velocity. Okay? The, the z component is always zero. What if I pass from a two-dimensional rank to a one-dimensional rank? What does it mean? Well, it means that 
geometrically those two vectors are aligned okay it means that uh, there are some uh, columns of the Jacobian in linear combination how can I arrange the robot how can I arrange the robot such that those two vectors are aligned for example in this configuration for example there is something that uh, I, I don't like uh, now from the intuitive aspect and we will see mathematically why this is uh, unpleasant uh, I'm losing rank it means that the mapping from Q dot to B is losing some dimensionality I cannot achieve all the end effector velocities for example here instantaneously you cannot achieve a velocity along that direction it's the only direction where you can go are the two directions superimposed that are orthogonal to the last link okay? so first of all J loses rank I'm losing mobility of my manipulator. And we will see several examples in order to understand what does it mean losing it. Another problem, I experience infinite solutions to the kinematic problem. Now, this is not very clear. Here there is just a list of the problems and we will see later. And also we will see layer joint space velocity. We can start understanding a little bit now what does it mean. Let us assume that I do want to go in that direction with my end effect. Okay? So I have uh, a VA designed. I want to apply a control law that just go in that direction. But my motor are here. I need to inverse this one. Easy. Let's just left multiply by the inverse. Let us assume that it's squared. So J minus 1. Easy. But if I'm losing rank, I cannot, uh, I cannot compute the inverse of the trajectory. This is the equivalent of a uh, division by zero. So the problem is not really when I'm singular, because when I'm singular, I can check this is zero, okay? And with the my controller, I can check. The problem is when I'm close to this. If I have here a number that is very small, it's close to zero, or sometimes it's here, there are very large numbers. So even if I want to go a very slow end effect of velocity, when I'm close to a singular uh, configuration, I do experience very large joint velocities. And this is a structural problem of any robots. This cannot be avoided. It's something that we should be able to handle with our controller. Those are kinematic singularities. Uh, uh, do not... Uh, confuse them with the representation singularity that we have seen they're totally different concepts okay so don't talk about singularities by themselves just always put the, the uh, kinematic or orientation adjective uh, in front okay we can have a kinematic singularity we always have kinematic singularities at the boundary of the reachable workspace. We will see a plot in next slide, but intuitively, here I'm in my, my arm is in a kinematic singularity. When, it is all, when it's totally stretched, it's always in a kinematic singularity. And this is very easy to recognize because it's uh, uh, present in all, uh, in all the robots. 
So I can avoid to work with my arm in that configuration, yes. So it's very easy to manage, to handle this kind of singularity. But the problem is that the robot, they do experience uh, singularity inside the workspace, and it's very hard to find them. Okay? Uh, we don't know all the kinematic singularities of a robot. I mean, actually, they are not single configuration. They are uh, infinite points arranged in subspaces, but they are infinite points. Okay. Example. For the planar to link, as usual, we can see very simple example, and we can see the equations. There's something that we cannot do anymore with the a seven degrees of freedom arm because we cannot compute the deter symbolically the determinant of a six by seven Jacobian. This operation here to write symbolically determinant of J is equal A1 multiplied A2, there are two numbers, multiplied the sinus theta two is something that we cannot do for a full dimensional robot. It's simply impossible to compute. And then it's so uh, difficult to handle all non-linearities that it would be also useless. But with the planar to link we can uh, have a closed form interpretation. So this is uh, my <coughs> Jacobian. I compute the determinant and I see when the determinant is zero, when theta two is equal zero or theta two is equal pi. Okay? Well, this is theta two is equal zero and theta two equal pi is uh, closed on itself. They both share the same situation. JP1 is parallel to JP2. I lose its mobility in the sense that uh, I cannot achieve uh, a velocity, an arbitrary velocity, in that direction. Mm -hmm. This is uh, in the boundary of the workspace. The fact that I lose mobility same job. They're, they're giving you the same end effect of velocity. And this is not nice because uh, if I'm in an industrial environment and I decide my trajectory offline and that should be my trajectory for next six months, I can do all the tests that I want. I make the simulations and ensure that I'm not touching any kinematic singularity and I'm not I'm not affected by the division by zero, and I am happy with that. But if my robot needs to move on a sensor-based architecture, so for example, uh, I'm uh, uh, driven by a sensor or by a user, with joystick or whatever, with brain-computer interface as we have in our lab, uh, I cannot know in advance what kind of movements will be required to my robot. And uh, I can easily touch a kinematic singularity. So my controller needs to be able to treat with this issue. Okay? Mm. Here I just made a plot with three links that is conceptually equal to this one. Okay? Here I have uh, five zero zero degrees. First, second, and third link all uh, stretched. And JP1, JP2, and JP3, uh, one over the other, are superimposed. Here I'm clearly in uh, a kinematic singularity. 
And this is a kinematic singularity at the boundary of my workspace. This is a kinematic singularity inside my workspace, okay? 5, 0, 180, again, they are parallel. Of course, I cannot ask my robot to, to make this check. Oh, oh, this is just an interpretation, but my controller needs to, to properly handle it somehow. Okay, let us <coughs> just see some kinematic singularities for typical structure. For example, for a robot with a spherical wrist. I told you that the spherical wrist is a common design uh, for several reasons. The, the main reason is that you do want to provide the, the, the wrist with the capability to provide the orientation to your end effect while the other links <coughs> are designed in order to provide gross motion to the wrist. In the wrist, you have usually three compact motors, three compact links, short link, and one possibility is that they are uh, designed in order to have uh, a, this kinematic. Now, there is a, a holding structure. In this specific case, this is the Stanford, but it will be true for others. And we can compute the Jacobian and just, let me say, partition the Jacobian. If you remember, we, we know how to compute the geometric Jacobian and the symbolic expression is always the same. If I have rotational joint, for the linear part, this is the generic expression. And for the orientation part, I have the, well, I have exactly the z of uh, 3, 4, and 5, the z of the uh, linked fixed frame. It means that uh, it's very easy to understand when, uh, it's very easy to understand uh, when a, a kinematic singularity arises, because I can have a look on when those uh, axes are parallel. Okay? So in this case, uh, the interpretation is easy. I don't need to make uh, uh, numerical computations. <coughs> I, can, okay, I can select the end effector such that j12 is equal to zero, and then the determinant of j is given by the product of the two, the, uh, the two block diagonal determinants. And then we can check separately when I have a kinematic singularity for the wrist and for the whole structure. And the wrist, now, the interpretation is very clear in the sense that uh, I do have... Uh, I do have the two z, uh, z unit vectors parallel one each other. And clearly it means that uh, I'm facing a kinematic singularity. Am I losing mobility? Well, yes, because you cannot achieve all the orientation um, all the angular velocities with these three. Basically, those two are going to give you the same angular velocity around the, the axis. Okay? Here we can appreciate another big problem with kinematic singularity. And it's given by the internal motion. If I give to this joint here a certain angular velocity, and to this joint here, the same magnitude with opposite sign, this is not going to move. I'm going to have uh, two joints that move and compensate for the movement. This is an internal movement. It's something that uh, is not affecting the end effect, but I'm wasting my, um, I'm wasting my energy, okay? Can be worse than that. 
For the holding structure, if I have an anthropomorphic robot, again, this is a simple structure. I can compute symbolic ID determinant, and uh, I notice that I can have two different kind of uh, kinematic singularity. This is named elbow singularity. What is the linear velocity that you cannot provide in this configuration? to apply an instantaneous angular uh, joint velocity okay, to the tree. What are the linear velocity that you have at the end of factor? And what is the, the direction that you cannot achieve? In the vertical? What do you, what, what do you mean by vertical? With the instantaneous movement of this one, I can have uh, a vector that is uh, uh, orthogonal to the blackboard. Okay, entering and going out, it depends from the sign, we don't care. And with those two, I can have a velocity, linear velocity, along that direction, and I'm missing this one. Okay? So this is clearly a kinematic singularity. And now, what is uh, the linear velocity that I'm missing in this kinematic, singulari uh, kinematic singularity? Uh, I would like to, you to notice that now the kinematic singularity does not arise in one configuration. It arises in uh, an infinite number of configurations, and they're all the configuration for which the end effector is along that direction, okay? So there are infinite kinematic singularity. Now, what is the velocity that you cannot achieve for this one? singularity. But then this guy here is moving without affecting the end effect. So you are losing the possibility to apply any linear velocity on the y direction. Okay? And it clearly is a kinematic singularity. Yes? I have a question about the uh, plan of belief. Uh, you say that uh, theta cannot be 0 or pi, but in reality... Theta 2. Yes, but in reality, will you ever have uh, pi as a theta 2? Uh, or is it just to say that it's... No, no, you can imagine a, a, a plan of... You know, if, if, if you have uh, a motor... Can imagine that the motor are not oh, okay. on the same. Okay. Okay. 
that case, both they have uh, uh, infinite rotation possibilities. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, five minutes.